Ladies and guys who like to wear no pants when they record podcasts. Andy here, author of the best Tinder guide on the internet. This is the Kill You're in a Loser show. Let's fucking go. And we are sitting on, ladies and gentlemen, day 362 of this goddamn project. And I thought what I would do is read out, I've written a bunch of notes here, basically go through and read out some things that I've learned from this 365 project. So if you're not familiar, I've been doing one of these every single day, one of these videos and podcasts every single day for the last year, have not skipped a day, have not missed a day. And it's been a huge, a huge learning experience. I've, I've done a 365 project like this before many, many, many years ago, I did a photography one that was way harder than this one. But I'd say this one has taught me more. And so we're going to go through and I'm going to read out a lot of the stuff that I've learned from doing this. And the hope of this podcast is that you, as in you listening, motherfucker, you right now, jump in and do something similar. You know, it doesn't have to be a full year. Just do something every day for a month. Do something every day for three months. If you want to go the full year, awesome. So I'm going to give you some tips. I'm going to try and make the case as to why I think you would benefit from doing the same thing. Let's fucking go. So... The first thing it's taught me is just jump in before you're ready. Give yourself permission to suck. This is a concept that I already kind of had in my head. This is a a very big philosophy of mine. I talk about it uh, when it comes to hitting on girls. Just jump in there. Like guys will ask me all the time, what do I say to the girl? Like I want to go and hit on that girl over there. What do I say? And I say, it doesn't fucking matter. You're going to do a bad job. Like you've never done this before. You're nervous. You're shitting yourself. It's not really going to matter what you do. Just give yourself permission to suck. You're going to do a shitty job. Just go fucking do it. That was the first article I ever wrote on my website. Give yourself permission to suck. And it was the second podcast that I ever recorded in this 365 project. It was just called give yourself permission to suck. And I was really terrified. I was convinced that I wasn't going to have anything interesting enough to say. I think my biggest fear at the start was that no one would li- would listen, that I would put, not that they would hate it, but that they just wouldn't listen. Like being ignored is way worse than being hated. At least being hated means they engaged with you. There's something there. But if you get ignored, it's like you're not even worth listening to. And so I was terrified that no one was going to listen. No one was going to follow me. No one was going to like it. I wasn't going to help anyone. You know, I wasn't going to change anyone's life. Like nothing good would come of this, right? It would just be a year. I was always going to finish the project. When I say I'm going to do something, I fucking do it. And I knew I was going to finish the fucking project no matter what, even if no one listened. But that was my biggest fear. Like imagine being on day 362 like I am now. And imagine if there was like two people listening. Like that was my biggest fear. So I had to jump in before I was ready. And I'll say the same to you. If you're thinking of doing something like this, or even if you're just talking about like going to the gym or going outside or hitting on girls, whatever it is, like, you're not going to feel ready. Like you are going to do a bad job at the start. I'm sorry, but that's inevitable. You don't get to go around that. Almost nobody is naturally talented at something. And even when you are, you fuck it up accidentally because you don't know what you're doing. So give yourself permission to suck, jump in there and get started. The second thing I learned, I already kind of knew this, but this just like this project really reinforced it is even when you don't want to do something, show up anyway. So Obviously, this applies to content creation, going outside and talking to girls, going to the gym, probably the gym, honestly, more than anything, like when you don't want to be there, when you don't want to go, when you feel tired, you feel hungover, you feel low energy, you're just not in the right mood, you're not in a good headspace. I'm sorry, but you have to go. If you want to be successful, you have to build a habit. If you want to hit on, if you want to get laid a lot, you have to hit on a lot of girls. That doesn't mean waiting until you feel like it. Because most of the time you won't feel like it because it's fucking terrifying. It's nerve wracking. Why would you feel like subjecting yourself to that? Most people avoid that. Most people self-medicate with Netflix and TV and bullshit like that and video games and porn because you don't want to do the thing. Your body doesn't want you to do the thing that's uncomfortable. You have to force yourself to do it even when you don't want to. And there were many, many, many days, many fucking days. I did podcasts called, like there was one, probably the best one example is I don't want to be here. I literally called it, I don't want to be here. And I just did a podcast about how I didn't want to fucking be there. And it was a really good podcast. It was actually a really good episode. So a lot of the time when you don't want to go, or you don't want to do something, show up anyway. And I think you guys will be surprised by how many times that will be some of your best work. So if we're talking the gym, I can't tell you how many times I haven't wanted to go to the gym. 
I say, fuck it. I need to just go. I rock up at the gym and I have like the best fucking workout ever. I set a PR and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? This was meant to be a bad day, but I showed up anyway. The people who are successful show up every single day, even when they don't want to. The people who live mediocre lives wait until they feel good before they do anything. And again, spoiler alert, 95% of the time you won't feel like doing it. I don't feel like doing stuff most of the time. I don't feel like doing this podcast. Let's say 80% of the episodes I've recorded, I didn't want to record. Like, I would have rather sat on the couch and played video games. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy them. Otherwise, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have chosen doing podcasts, right? But 80% of the time, I would have rather just play video games or watch YouTube or go for a walk or have sex or do almost anything else. I could say the same with my coaching. And again, I fucking love coaching. But if you, I have two coaching calls coming up in the next like two hours. If I got to do whatever I wanted to do, I would just lay on the couch all day. Like if I could somehow get the money without doing anything, I would just lay on the couch. Why wouldn't I? That'd be amazing. I'd rather not do the coaching calls, but I have to show up. I have to do a good job. That's what you have to do. If you have a goal, you need to show up every single day. And again, I hope I made it clear that I really fucking love podcasts and I really fucking love coaching. So Uh, the next thing I learned is consistency is always the most important thing as I just fucking said so there's a book called the slight edge or a concept I guess you could say called the slight edge which is every single day you want to do like a tiny little bit I talk about this all the time do a tiny little baby step every single day and it adds up over a long period of time those little kind of baby steps you take you know it's like that cliche the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step the more of those you add up by consistency or through consistency the further along you get Another thing I learned from this project is as long as the message is good, people will cut you some slack on the delivery. So what I mean by that is my first, I don't know, 150 podcasts, maybe 200 were pretty shit. I didn't have video. It was audio only, but people liked them because the content as in the message, the thing that I was trying to get across to you was good. I was giving actionable advice in every single episode. They were you know, most of my content is like a how-to kind of thing, even this fucking video, which is basically just a recap of my project. I'm going to try and convince you. I'm giving you plenty of actionable advice and I'm going to try and convince you to do something similar, whether for a week, a, a month, a year, doing something every single day. So I think as long as you your content is good, and this doesn't just apply to content creation, but we'll just focus on that. As long as your message is good or what you're trying to get across is helpful to people or you're giving value, it doesn't really matter if your audio quality is a bit shit or your video quality is a bit shit or you don't have like fancy shit in the background. Now I've got a decent setup, right? People didn't really care at the start. Obviously this shit looks nicer. Like I'm glad I have a nice setup now, but you don't have to, I think people wait. This is a, a similar sort of thing where people wait until everything is perfect before they do something. And I've seen too many people with content creation go like, oh, but like, like how many of you on the forums and shit have said you want to start a YouTube channel because I have one and you're like, fuck, I want to do the same thing, but oh, I don't have a fancy setup. Andy, what camera do you use? Andy, where, how much do the lights cost? Andy, that, that microphone you have costs like $400. Like I can't afford that. It's like for fuck's sakes, I was starting out with like $50 worth of equipment. Just start. It doesn't matter if the delivery isn't perfect. You will get better at that over time. I guess that really applies to like hitting on girls as well. Like you're not going to be smooth at the start. Your delivery is going to be shit, but the message is decent. The message is in like, Hey, I think you're cute. I'm Andy. What are you up to today? That's a good message. The delivery is going to be shit. Who gives a shit? You'll get better at time over time with practice. Another thing I learned, and I, I, I touched on this a second ago is always give value. So give people a takeaway message in every single piece of content you do help people aim to make their lives better. And if we're not just talking about content creation, we can talk about friendships. Aim to make your friends better people for having spent time with you. Aim to make the girls you sleep with better off for having met you. When you give value to the world, when you give value to other people, when you try and help people, when you try and make people, even not help, even just make their life a little bit better, give them a good fucking day, give them a good adventure, have fun with them. When you focus on giving value, people give it back. Like, holy fuck, does it come back? Like, absolutely. So I learned that. I already kind of knew that. Well, I already definitely knew that, but like reinforced through this project. Another thing I learned, interesting enough, is nothing bad happens if you put your face out there. So I was already sort of putting myself out there on my website with my articles. Like I I showed my face. I had nude pictures of me, of the girls that I sleep with, you know, plenty of that sort of stuff. But being on YouTube is 
more vulnerable, I'm going to say. Like, I had a lot of tiny... That was a contradiction, wasn't it? I had a lot of nervousness around something bad happening. I don't know what that bad was, but it's like, it's like this general fear of like, I'm putting myself out there. I'm being vulnerable. It's the same sort of thing you have when you first start hitting on girls. You're like, I feel vulnerable. Like if I have to walk up and say like, yo, you're cute. I'm going to get judged on that. Or you feel like you're going to get judged on that. What if she thinks I'm ugly? What if she thinks I'm creepy? What if she thinks I'm a weirdo for hitting on her? What if blah, 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 blah. And I learned, I mean, again, I already sort of knew it, but this really just reinforced it. Like nothing bad happens when you're vulnerable. Most of the time, people reciprocate with vulnerability themselves. I did that video, by the time this one comes out, it would have been several weeks ago. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video saying, I'm grateful for all of you. Go on my channel, go find that video if you're interested. And in the comment, I, I, I was very vulnerable in that. And I told everyone, I want you guys to write a comment with all the stuff that you've changed in your life, you know, over the last year or whatever. And there's like 45 comments or something, just like a bunch of people just saying like, here's what I've done, here's what I've done, here's what I've done. And I got like another fucking 15 emails from that. I got like people on my forums and shit. It was like really fucking cool. And I found that so many times, the videos where I'm the most vulnerable, people give me the most back. Like I'll get emails saying, hey man, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, you were depressed or whatever years ago. Or, I'm sorry to hear that you're going through a bad time right now with the lockdowns and shit like that from COVID. I'm sorry to hear about blah, 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 blah. And the same thing happens in relationships and friendships. The more vulnerable you can be, the more you can put yourself out there, the more you can be real, which is why I advocate all the fucking time. Be real with girls. Just tell them shit. Be honest. Don't hide anything. Don't keep anything back. Just be your authentic fucking self. The more you do that, the more people respect you and give you that back. As in give you that honesty and vulnerability back. And then you just don't have to play any fucking games. You know what I mean? If you can just be real with people and they're real back with you, it's like, oh, we don't have to play this fucking game where we have to pretend that we're perfect human beings and say the right things and everything's smooth and all that sort of bullshit. The next thing I learned, similar to this one, is most people don't have any skin in the game and don't put themselves out there. So what you can learn from that is I shouldn't care about that or I don't want to care. I'm working on caring less. No. Start that whole sentence again. So I care less now about their dumbass opinions than I did at the start. So I already kind of knew from my articles, but it's it's more obvious on YouTube because you get anonymous people on YouTube. Like people, it's very easy to leave a YouTube comment and tell someone, like tell the video author or whatever why they're wrong about something. You know, like you, it takes you two seconds to just go like, you're wrong, this is a dumb video. Whereas on my website, when I was writing articles before, you have to like sign up for an account. You have to like put your name in, put your email in. Like there's a, a higher barrier to entry. So you're not going to write some dumbass opinion that you spent like literally three seconds thinking of. And what I found is the people who leave these like dumbass anonymous opinions where they show that, like no proof that they know what they're talking about and they clearly don't know what they're talking about. These people have no skin in the game. Like most people have no skin in the game is something that I learned. Most people aren't doing the stuff that we're doing, guys. Like most people aren't improving themselves. They're not putting themselves out there and talking to women. They're not going to the gym and losing weight. They're not working on their style. They're not working on a business. They're not trying to do anything elite. They have no skin in the game. And yet these are the only people who will talk you out of your goals. Because by the way, anyone who's working on a goal will never talk you out of your goals. They don't ever. Why would they? They want you to succeed because that drags them up as well. Like, when you're all working on a mission, you all want each other to succeed because, you know, that saying, we're only as strong as our weakest link. So if we can push the weakest links up, then we're all stronger for it. Like, so anytime you get some criticism or someone trying to talk you out of your goals or someone trying to bring you down, what I want you guys to remind yourself, and this is something that I remind myself of, is this person has no skin in the game. Like this person isn't trying to improve themselves. This person isn't even playing the game that we're playing, like the self-improvement game. They're not. They're sitting off on the sidelines. They're the same sort of person that would sit at home and say some dumbass opinion about like some football star they see on TV or some basketball or whatever and be like, oh, he should have made that shot. Oh, what's he doing there? He fucked up. It's like, how the fuck do you know? You've never played the game in your entire fucking life. You're a backseat, you know, driver, so to speak. And, and I see this all the fucking time. Someone would just say the most dumbass opinion. And it's all, it's always hilarious because these dumbass opinions will always be like very contradictory to what someone else says. So like, 
I've done a lot of content about getting laid on Tinder, obviously. And I would get a bunch of people saying like, Tinder is dead. Online dating is a scam. Like you can't get laid. No man can get laid on online dating. It's all a joke. Like blah, 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 blah. Right. I'll get like multiple comments from that. And then I'll do a video saying like, why I want you to start cold approaching, like hitting on girls in public. And then I'll get like four or five comments from people saying like, cold approach doesn't work. Like going outside and talking to girls doesn't work. The only thing that works is like online dating. So it's like, these people are so fucking like, I was having this conversation with Imogen. I was like, do you think these people know that there's like, that, that they contradict each other? Or, or do you think that they generally like they have solipsism or something? They think that they're so correct that they could never even fathom. Like they just don't see the other people disagreeing with them. And she's like, yeah, I just don't. I think they just typed a comment within three seconds and spat it out. And that's, that's kind of it. And so what I'm talking about here is a greater concept, which again, I'll bring it back to what I said before. A lot of people don't have skin in the game, guys. Like if someone is trying to talk you out of your goals, because I see this a lot, someone will say, they'll come on the forums or whatever, or they'll, you know, join my group coaching or whatever. And they'll say, my friend, this, this friend is trying to talk me out of getting laid. He says it's shallow. And it's like, I have to remind them, your friend has no skin in the game. Has your friend ever talked to a girl in his entire life that he didn't know? Has your friend ever tried to get laid? Has your friend ever tried to find a girlfriend, not just accidentally get a girlfriend? Has he ever actually like gone out to seek a girlfriend or a, a casual relationship? And every single time, no, he hasn't. He has no skin in the game. I agree. You're right. So you have to stop caring about dumbass opinions. And this is something I learned from this project, because like I said, I got more dumbass opinions as soon as I went on YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. But YouTube just seems to be like a great place for dumbass opinions or for like low intellect opinions, low value opinions, opinions that haven't been thought through for more than three seconds. Because like I said, you just like whack the keys on the keyboard and you type something and you hit enter and you go done. I don't ever have to think about that again. It's not like you've sat there and taken the time to like sign up for an account and all that kind of shit. So when you hear these dumbass opinions or when someone's trying to talk you out of something, most of the time they, or almost always they don't have any skin in the game because anybody who does wants you to succeed. The next thing I learned is I love content creation. So I already kind of knew that from my articles, but now I've discovered I also really like putting my face out there and giving my thoughts. This is more like free form. If you read my articles, they're heavily edited. I edit my articles like five, 10 fucking times before I actually hit publish. And then even then, sometimes I'll go back through an old article. I'll just be reading it. Like someone will mention it and I'll go back and read it and I'll like edit shit and fix it. Even like two years later, I'll add more shit to it. So my articles were always like heavily curated and well thought out. And I wanted them to be well thought out. These are just like off the cuff. Like I'm, I have dot points here. Sure. But a lot of the podcasts, I don't have dot points. A lot of the time I'm just freestyling. Even right now I'm freestyling. There is nothing. I'm not reading anything in front of me right now. Just the general fucking dot points. I kind of like this. I kind of like this format. It's a bit more like conversational. I can surprise myself sometimes by where the content goes. Like the video that I did yesterday where I read out that guy's email. All I planned on doing was just reading his fucking email. I had no intention of actually like freestyling and making greater points. I thought it was going to be a 10 minute podcast. It ended up being like a fucking 40 minute podcast. That happens sometimes. I really like the organic nature of this kind of content creation of YouTube, of podcasts and stuff. I am going to keep this style up for my podcast as in organic and like unscripted and I just chat. For my YouTube, I think I'm going to make them a little more scripted, like edited and stuff like that. I, I, I'm still working it out, but I'll see how I go. But I like this. I found out I like this and I wasn't sure that I would. I honestly thought that I would love articles and not really like this because this is kind of intimidating. Having a fucking camera, I don't care now, but like fucking hell, man. The first like 20 podcasts that I did with the camera in front of me, it's so intimidating. It's like staring you in the fucking eyes. It's like looking you in your soul and you you can't help but feel like the, it's going to sound weird, but like the camera is judging you. It's fucking weird, but yeah. I don't feel like that now, but anyone who started YouTube or content creation will tell you the same shit. It's really scary at the start. Uh, another thing I learned is if you want to do something, okay, no, so if you if you want to do something similar, like if you want to do a three six five or something like that, the best advice I can give you is just fucking start. Like you're gonna do a bad job at the start, you're gonna completely suck. It's gonna be awful. It's gonna be hard. You know, I just told you some of my fears I had at the start like the camera is judging me like I'm gonna fuck up nobody's gonna listen to this I'm gonna I don't even know if this is watchable you, you're gonna have all those sort of fears you're gonna be a fucking miserably 
terrified at the start, but you just got to start. It's the same thing with like hitting on girls, going to the gym. You're going to be terrified. You're going to be nervous. Just fucking start, man. Like don't waste any time. Just fucking start. If for no other reason than the fact that you'll become elite at whatever it is you do consistently. Like if you do a project like this, you do something every day for a year, which by the way, can be like anything. It can be, I'm going to go for a 10 minute walk every day for a year and I won't miss a day. I'm going to take a photo every day for a year, just with my fucking phone, going to take a quick snapshot. One of the guys on my forums has been doing a, a 365 project at the same time as mine. And he took a, a new photo for Tinder every single day. And it's like, he got fucking elite at photography. I've had several people do just like this, this kind of thing where like Radical did a video a day. I think he's almost finished his as well. He's going to finish about the same time as mine. Um, Joe on my forums and in my group coaching, he's done one of these like YouTube videos every day. I think he's almost finished. Imogen, my girlfriend, did a piece of art every day, just like a little sketch or, you know, sometimes full on painting, shit like that. So if you want to do something like this, absolutely i recommend it like if you're even thinking of doing this like a 365 project or just anything like i said even going for a walk every day absolutely fucking do it absolutely fucking do it you become absolutely elite at that thing like these go and listen to the first episode of this podcast and you're gonna fucking cringe compared to this yeah there's still a lot of room for improvement and shit but at least i can look the fucking camera in the eyes now and not be intimidated i can freestyle without going completely off the rails and it's actually reasonably interesting i have a point to every podcast whereas the first like 50 podcasts i'm just fucking rambling you can tell i have no idea what the fuck i'm doing so absolutely i recommend doing something like this you become truly elite you will learn a hell of a lot along the way it's a hell of a lot of a sorry a hell of a good story to tell other people like i did something every day for a year and didn't miss a single day that's a, kind of a fucking cool story that's kind of fucking ballsy i've had so many people say like damn dude like you did this every day like how so many of my mates have said like how did you do this every day for a year dude that's fucking insane like good shit so it's a cool story you get props for it what i would say is start make sure you make the the thing that you do every day very manageable so Yes, these are full on videos, but I knew I had plenty of time. I knew I had plenty of time. Like, you know, coaching is my full time gig. It wasn't when I started this project, sure, but I was working towards that and I knew I would eventually get there. So I have plenty of free time. I can do a half hour podcast every single day. It's not really a big issue. But for other people, if you're working a full time job, you know, you don't have a lot of free time. What I would recommend is make this as easy as you possibly can so that even on your worst day, like even if you're sick, you can still do something. So like I said, just take a fucking photo with your camera, sketch something for two minutes. Do I've had other guys do a project like this where they're like, I'm gonna write four lines of code for my you know, programming hobby every single day, just four lines of code. That's like nothing. Make it so fucking small that even on your worst day, you will still do it. Another thing you can do for certain projects, like if you're doing content, like let's say you're gonna do a sketch every day or a video every day like I'm doing or a podcast or you know a piece of art or something like that I would use what I call buffers and so what I mean by that is get ahead that's what I've done with this project the entire time I've been ahead the entire time so I will pre-record like four or five sometimes like 10 or 15 episodes in one day and then schedule them for release over the next like coming days so I'm always ahead so if I ever am sick or I'm ever you know heaven forbid get in hospital or something get in a fucking car crash or something i still have the content coming out so i definitely recommend that if you're doing something like taking a photo or sketching imogen has done that with her art stuff it's like you sketch out she'll sketch out like 20 drawings in a day and then she's good for the next three weeks you can kind of take the next three weeks off if you know what i mean that doesn't work for everything like if you're doing something like i'm gonna leave the house and go for a walk for 10 minutes every single day yeah you can't do buffers for that so just do that every day that's why i recommend doing something so ridiculously easy that even if you're sick you can still do it and remember that you don't have to do this for 365 days you could just pick any arbitrary day you want any arbitrary amount of time you want do it for 30 days i think you guys will be surprised by how much it fucking changes your life if you want some other fucking examples here's one that i saw someone else do give one compliment to a stranger every single day for a year so you just go outside to people and you just say like hey i really like your shoes hey you look really cool Hey, you guys look like to a couple. Hey, you guys look really cute together. Just like a little compliment to people for a year. That's a life-changing one. That's fucking good. So I will sum up by saying I carried this torch for a year and the other people that did this project with me, we carried this torch for a year and now it is your turn to take that torch and carry it for the next year, for the next 365 days. So you're going to suck. 
You're going to be nervous. You're going to be terrified. Just fucking get started. We had to go through all that too. Please just get started. Please go right now. And as always, guys, go out there and crush your goals.